Get this beer everywhere. Allah Wakbar, Allah Wakbar. Allah Wakbar, Allah Wakbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu an la kulu rasul rasulullah. Ashadu an la Muhammad rasulullah. Allah wakbar, Allah wakbar. La ilaha illallah. In the name of the Almighty God, in the name of Allah, most gracious and most merciful, creator of the universe, creator of us, creator of everything that is on the earth and beneath the earth, we give praise and thanks to God. And I greet you, my brothers and sisters, with the greetings of peace. To my unbelieving and believing brothers and sisters, to my Christian brothers and sisters, peace be unto you. To my Hindu brothers and sisters, namaste. To my Rastafarian brothers and sisters, ja peace and ja love. To my Muslim brothers and sisters and all other denominations, I greet you with the greetings of peace in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, again, we are still obviously seeing the fight that has always been, has always been a universal fight, the fight between good and evil, the fight between God and what we call, or what is known as the devil. The situation with this chemical weapon of mass destruction that they are calling COVID-19 is a clear demonstration of how active and how powerful the devil is. We have evidence. We have been told in our scriptures that we must love our neighbor as ourselves. We must do unto others. It's all advice that was given to us in our various scriptures as to us living even though we are different human beings different customs different cultures different customs different colors but god has still always sent his advice to his prophets and messengers to tell us that we should live and try to live together. And he gave us rules and regulations within our various religions as to how to go about doing that. Separation is always performed and tried to ex be executed by the devil. What we are seeing is all the things that we do the godly things that we like to do. We like to visit our neighbors. We like to sit with our families. We like to hug our cousins and our sisters and brothers. Those are all things that we know from our scriptures. And all efforts are being made to separate us from each other, to destroy our feelings of love for one another, to interfere 
with our spiritual works, our spiritual understanding, our spiritual lives, due to the rumorous COVID-19. We are told to, to do these things. We are told to stay in our homes. And week after week, I mention it. And as long as it is existing, I will speak about it. We are even being arrested now for not wearing a mask. I wonder if Jesus would have been arrested if he didn't wear a mask. I wonder if Muhammad would have been arrested if he didn't wear a mask. I wonder if Moses and David and Krishna and Lord Shiva and Arjuna would have been arrested if they didn't wear masks. Well, there are some people in this life that believe in those people and that believe how they believed and in what they believed. And it is necessary for Satan to recognize that and understand that. Because that is the evident battle that is going on, good and evil. And it seems as if, as if evil is having the upper hand because those of us who believe and are sure that the only way this so-called virus because up to now it has still not been evidenced as to what we are up against there are theories upon theories upon theories. And if there is a theory, and I am forced to adhere to rules and regulations only because it's a theory, then it's injustice that is being done to me and to others like myself. We respect those who feel that this that Satan is mighty because those are the people who are readily following all the rules and regulations that Satan has put down. But well, that's Satan's work to divide, to separate, to bring psychological terror and anger, political intrigue, that's all Satan's work. And Satan has his agents that continue to do the work. But this particular situation that is facing us, and we are not sure of what we are up against, we are saying it's a weapon of mass destruction. It's a chemical, manufactured, invented weapon of mass destruction that is used with drones to distribute whatever it is distributing in chemicals on the earth. And those who are doing it, Satan and his followers, are going to be in for a big surprise. Because all that they're doing, it couldn't, still couldn't stop the thunder, the lightning, and the storm that we experienced. So as we continue, I would just like to appeal to those who say they have understanding and to let them know that wearing a mask does not guarantee danger 
from anything that is as dangerous as this may be. There are those who feel that that is not so. And I welcome that gesture of theirs and I accept how they feel. But it's important to feel how others feel. Others who are dedicated to the will of God, others who believe and have faith. That there is no virus or no chemical of mass destruction that will be able to touch or interfere with them. And those people and the philosophy of those people should be respected. And it is not democratic to use the famous word to interfere with the faith and the belief of people who are dedicate, dedicated to the spiritual life and are dedicated to loving their neighbors as themselves. You know, it is not strange for brothers and sisters Many people seem not to realize that the God that we believe in is a personal God. It's the same God, but it's a personal God. My God is personal to me. Your God has to be personal to you. It's not nobody's God I'm borrowing. I don't borrow Allah from any other Muslim. Allah belongs to me. And so, since we, our relationship to God is personal, then our behavior in that relationship is based on faith and belief. And since we feel to ourselves that Within this terror of evil, this weapon of mass destruction that is terrorizing many, and they are terrorizing also many who say they believe. But there are those who say they believe and those who believe and those who feel to themselves that their belief is the strongest thing to protect them. No mask or no washing of hands, but their belief and their faith is their strength that they will use to fight any virus, any weapon of mass destruction. And that philosophy of people like that must be recognized. For then you're forcing such people to believe in Satan. For such people believe that it is satanic implementations and that the only one that can deal with Satan is the Creator and Almighty God. So those people's belief and philosophy must be respected. It's very important. Rather than throw your rules and regulations of which you are not sure and force people who believe and have their faith in their creator to do things that are against their democratic rights. For that's what we hear about most of the time. The democracy where there is free speech, free freedom of religion, free philosophies, freedom to move east, west, north, and south as we like. That's the kind of democracy that is preached. The problem that not only with the virus and this calamity, 
but with other things that they are not practiced. Preached, but not practiced. And our world is the way it is, brothers and sisters, right now, because we have a lot of preachers and a lot of those among them who are not practicing what they preach or who are afraid to practice what they preach. Like I said before, I would have wondered if Jesus was here if he would have worn a mask. For all Jesus told us about all the time, his only protection was his Father who is in heaven. All the Prophet Muhammad told us all the time is that the master of him, himself, as a prophet, is Allah, not a mask. So there are those of us who are in that position and we need to be, our philosophies need to be respected and also protected. Not because you feel and you are afraid, because that's why you wear a mask. You wear a mask because you're afraid to die. It is as simple as that. You know, and Satan continues to drive that fear within us. And you know people can die from fear. Maybe many of the deaths that they are diagnosing as being COVID-19 might be deaths of pure fear. So when you get a flu now that has similar type of behavior pattern, then you become even more afraid. So fear is being used. And brothers and sisters, this is not anything new. There's a lot of information on it and a lot of wisdom that is, every day we are hearing more, every year you're hearing something else. You know, one time it could be contracted by animals, another time it can be contracted by people, another time it was invented, another time it was in a lab, and all kinds of different things. But what we have been saying all the time, we know it is man-made. It has been made by man. Satan has directed his people to act in this manner, to perform this evil, and to separate the inhabitants of the earth, not only from each other as cultural difference, but to separate us from our families. to lock us up when there are emergencies, sicknesses, you can hardly get an ambulance because everything is locked down. The ambulance will come, but how long will it take? You can't get a pharmacy open in certain areas. No pharmacy in case the family needs medical help in some way. So it cannot be of God. Those types of undemocratic rules and regulations cannot be of God. For the democrat democracy of Almighty God is like this. As the heavens are higher than the earth, that's what God said. So are my ways higher than yours. And we will see the result. For it's, it's, it's coming more and more to light. That this so-called virus, rep, viral reputation that is causing fear 
among people as to what it really and truly is. So I can only say to the believing brothers and sisters, hold strong to your faith, because if you are, if Allah, if Almighty God has designated it that you die from a chemical weapon of mass destruction that they're calling a virus, virus then so be it. That's how we believe. That's the faith that we must have. For only Almighty God can fight Satan. No mask. No washing of hands can stop Satan. Only Almighty God can do that if we allow God to do that. But if we fear Satan, how can we fear God? We cannot fear God if we fear Satan. And if we are afraid of Satan, then we don't have any trust and faith in God. And in a crisis like this, if we don't have that trust and faith in God, we will lose our lives because we are up against a warlike people who are warring among themselves and who are using chemical weapons to fight this war and drones to distribute the chemical weapons where and when and how they want to distribute it. Satan in full swing, Satan in full works. And if we are afraid of Satan, then we have no protection. See? And we will die. Because that fear makes us lose all kind of faith. And it is the faith in God. That's why I said we must allow Almighty God to fight this terror and this evil. And so that the God within us, that power of God within us, for that's where God lives. God tells us conscientiously that we need not do what others do and nothing will harm us. Then we know within us, those of us who hear the word and hear the voice, we will act in accordance. And we should not be chastised for doing so. And our philosophy and our actions should be respected. For it shows when we act in accordance with the philosophy that we are protected by Almighty God, there is nothing that can interfere with us. That's the faith that we have to have. And the more the believing men and women think like that, act like that, practice that, Satan becomes weak. He has to find another virus to come up with. Because this is not the first one yet. There have been others. Because his antidote that he has constructed that Satan has constructed. These are the vaccines that we are hearing about. But that's another story, brothers and sisters. Another manufactured product of Satan and his generals and his army. But we are determined to win this battle. And we will. Don't interfere with us when you see us not doing what you do. Respect it and understand that we all are not influenced by Satan. There are some of us who are determined in no way to be influenced by Satan and the satanic forces. 
still fresh in our presence, still to be determined how they died, who killed them, and why. Again, those of us who believe can only turn to God. But what we know as we turn, is that God is the author of life and death. And as I said before, as God said, as the heavens is higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. Is it, it is the same thing with death. As Death is determined by God. It's not determined by us. And whatever happens in the creation, and we are the creation, part of his creation, it has to do with us. Brothers and sisters, those boys did not die in vain. For those of you who believe, those of us who believe will know that they did not die in vain and that the truth will be revealed and it would not be nice for those who are revealed. You know, it's our country today, brothers and sisters, it's not like it was yesterday. We are practically in a semi-state of colonization. Everybody is here. Everybody is coming here. Everybody wants a piece of here. And we have to be very careful about those who claim to be coming to help. And those in the disguise of coming to help, create confusion. We have a situation in our country that's been going on for years that they call racism. I say they call it, I don't call it that. And it's something that people of influence can always use in order to further their intentions, and their evil intentions pertaining to this country. The valuables and the riches of this country 
has been realized for years. And those of us who are supposed to be Guyanese have actually been just looking at it. We continue to hear about the population of Guyana is 700,000. I don't know if that's correct, but if it's 700,000, then it's 700,000 Guyanese, and all the other 100,000 are not Guyanese. So if they say that Guyana, Guyana has 700,000 people, Guyanese people, it might not be so inaccurate. But those people who are supposed to be Guyanese, today, brothers and sisters, have very little to say regardless of which position you might see them in. The so-called inhabitants of Guyana, you know, they, they usually say that the Amerindians are the indigenous um, people of Guyana, the first people. But if we look at it in a more general pattern, the, as Guyanese, concerning those who are here now and who are coming, we are the indigenous people, the 700,000 or the 800,000. And you know what happens to people who are indigenous. You know how they are used, you know how they are abused, and you know how they are treated regardless of which level. And so the confusion or acts of murder to create confusion is something that is highly possible in the situation in which we find ourselves right now. So brothers and sisters, you know, again, our religious leaders, I haven't heard them come out as usual to say anything. And we still continue to advocate a religious planning council, a national religious planning council with religious learned men and women who are not affiliated to any political party that can mediate, for example, in situations like this, with the murder of those boys and the protests on the street. I saw no pastors come out. I saw no imams come out to speak to the people. I saw no pandits come out to speak to the people. And I ask myself continuously, why are our religious leaders who know the situation as they know their own children and they knowingly conceal the truth that Allah reveals to them? Knowingly. And if a position is not taken in the aspect of forming something where God is able to be proud of those who say they believe. The prophets and messengers of Almighty God never only said they believed, they acted and practiced what they believed. For they know that Almighty God is stronger as far as their belief is concerned <clears throat> than anything else 
so they are not afraid to face whatever comes up upon them. And if we continue to allow what's going on now, because brothers and sisters, when we look at the parliamentary discussions now, all it is is an extension of CCJ. That's what we are seeing. And that's what we anticipated. But again, Almighty God is allowing these things to happen for the plan that is out there must be fulfilled. And those who have eyes to see, let them see. See, when you hand down old, outdated, political garbage, when you hand that down and you say, we want to see that the youths become more involved, but you're handing down your old political garbage to the youths who take the same garbage and continue to deal with it. It's time, brothers and sisters, that that type of message coming from the older generation be stopped. If we are speaking about youths and the development of youths, then we want to hear the message that the youths have got to bring. We don't want to hear the messages that the, the garbage from the old garbage, because it's going to disunite parliament. It's going to disunite people, as it has been doing. And therefore, since we're speaking about youth development, we want to hear the ideas of the youths, not the garbage that was handed down to them for them to tell us. Brothers and sisters, in closing, I know that this month is our Indian Heritage Month. And I welcome the gesture of celebrating your heritage, like we celebrate the emancipation, like our other brothers and sisters celebrate their Chinese uh, rituals, and the Hindus do their Diwali festivals and so on. But I'd like to reach out, because I wish them very well. I'd like to reach out to the Amerindian community at this point in time and to ask them a favor. And this favor is to ask them during this particular month to be apologetic for some of the things that their ancestors contributed to the slave trade and to the slaves. I'm asking for that apology to be made by the Tushaus, the Ministry of Amerindian Affairs, and the modern-day Amerindians to be apologetic for the known or unknown pain and suffering that they contributed 
in conjunction with the slave master. To the slaves. I, I think it would be a fantastic gesture because you know it's something that is unspoken and I wonder why it is unspoken about and I'm sure that our Amerindian brothers and sisters would welcome the opportunity to clear the state, clear the slate, let it be a clean slate. for positions that you might be and being expected to do certain things. It must be understood that once history is hanging negatively, that it could always erupt. And I'm, I'm not here to spell out anything, but those who have ears to hear, let them hear. The Amerindians of today owes the people of African descent of today an apology concerning the behavior and the practice of their ancestors to the whole aspect of slavery. I want to wish them and a very prosperous heritage month and hope in every instant that they will understand the role that they play and the role that they have to play and the role that they, that they have already played. Brothers and sisters, the truth is the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. And those who don't want to hear the truth will continue to live the life. As-salamu alaykum. Practical experience is the greatest teacher. Memory is the greatest truth. And ungratefulness is the greatest sin. Breaking down is a whole big run around. A lot of talk is what goes on while the world Making new laws every 